Hola, buenos días, México. ¿Me escuchan? Sí. Sí. Ok, perfecto, pues. Buenos días en México. Masalher Phil Urdon. Good evening uh, in Jordan. My name is Luna. Yo soy Luna, uh, asistente de la área de cooperación de la Embajada de México en Jordania. I am the cooperative assistant uh, to the Embassy of Mexico in Jordan. Today, uh, thank you so much for the invitation. Thank you for part participating. Today we have um, Ms. Leila Nafa. Uh, Ms. Leila Nafa is going to talk to us about the situation of uh, women in Jordan. Uh, Ms. Leila has been the director of programs at the Arab Women Organization of Jordan, AWO graduated from the Faculty of English Literature at the University of Jordan and worked as an instructor at the UNRWA Teachers Training College. In 2005, she actively contributed to an, in uh, to an innovative approach by establishing the Musawa Network, a local partnership for women grassroots CBOs. Since then, Arab Women Organization and Musawa Network are matching, um, matching to unite the voices of Jordanian women to attain gender equality and women's rights. Nowadays, Leila is being acknowledged as a gender expert with special skills in monitoring Jordan's adherence to the international standards uh, pertaining to women's rights. Ms. Leila, yati kirafia. Ms. Leila, antedarit smaini. Sit Leila, I cannot hear you. Welcome, welcome, Sit Leila. Can you hear me? Uh, you have it on mute. You can unmute it. Is it better to unmute it, Leila? Can you hear me? Lazim bas unmute. And capsit the mic. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes, we can. Great, great. So should I start or are, who, are you waiting for me to speak? Yes, please, please. We already gave uh -huh. the briefing. Uh, we're waiting for your words, Ms. Leila. Yeah. Thank you so much for participating uh -huh. today. Yeah, uh, uh, I would like, first of all, to say sorry for what happened now, but I am very glad to uh, speak to people in Mexico uh, I greet you uh, all because it was your Independence Day, uh, and I I like uh, that we exchange uh, between us. Uh, uh, this is an initiative by uh, His Excellency the the Ambassador in Amman. I greet him for that. Uh, my name is Leila Nafar. It is written up, and uh, I represent the Arab Women Organization of Jordan. It is, uh, from now on, I will say AVO, uh, A-W-O. Uh, it's, uh, you know, abbreviation for my organization. Uh, I would like uh, to start by speaking about the current situation of uh, women in Jordan uh, speaking about uh, opportunities and about uh, challenges. Uh, this is what I care for uh, in, in the title. Uh, I will speak about uh, education of women. I will speak about work for women. I will speak uh, about, about health uh, for women. These are uh, good sides of uh, women in Jordan. And 
uh, I'm going to speak about the challenges, which is going to be about the legal steps that we need to change. We're, we're, I'm going to speak about the access to information, freedom of mobility of women, and the field which we work in in our organization, which is in um, abbreviation GBV, which is gender violence against women. So uh, I'd like to speak that in the Arab world and in Jordan, women have got in the last 50 years, good chances for education. Education in Jordan is very good when it comes to women participation. Now, in our universities, we have more women than men. Uh, this, this indicates that they get higher marks when they are in secondary uh, classes, so they have the opportunity to go to university. And uh, now we do have uh, the percentage, 52 women graduate from uh, universities, whereas the boys are uh, 48. This is an indication that education is an opportunity that is open for women in Jordan. Now, when um, uh, I, I speak about employment, all workplaces, are op opened for women. Once my organization made a calendar uh, for 12 months to show uh, how many jobs uh, women work in. So we went around and we looked for any job, any job can a woman work in. Uh, we found out that there is a woman trainer for aviation, for, for the airplane. And this is very, very nice. We were very happy to learn that women are trainers for aeroplanes, for uh, aviation. Also, uh, when uh, we speak uh, of, uh, you know, opportunity to work, it is open, but uh, 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 the access for women, uh, there are other problems like transportation, safe, a lack of harassment in work, so women can stay in the job. I will talk about uh, after they have. Uh, what is also good in Jordan is that women participate in the health services. They, they also participate in the education. There are many women teachers and there are many women nurses. So in the health, when uh, the COVID-19 came, there was a uh, statistics speaking that 70% of uh, people uh, serving uh, patients, serving sick people are women. So women are there in the health and women receive uh, also good health uh, shall we say, services. Now, when we come to challenges, the, uh, I mean, problems, the biggest problem is the legal uh, uh, opportunities. In the laws in Jordan, we have trouble. We have many, many things that uh, make women uh, not in a good position. The first thing uh, in our constitution, in our constitution, we have uh, in the constitution, uh, there is no discrimination against women in religion, in ethnic, uh, or in language. But they did not right in the constitution, there is no discrimination according to sex. We are fighting for that. We are fighting to include in article six, in paragraph one, to, to say non-discrimination 
according to sex. This will give us the opportunity not to have discrimination against women, but we are having a very bad situation. Uh, this is related to the nationality law. Women are not allowed to pass their nationality if they are married to non-Jordanians to pass their nationality to their children. If we change the constitution and we say in the constitution that women should, uh, that uh, there is no discrimination according to sex, then women can pass their nationality to their children. No discrimination according to sex, but we still don't have it. This is one of the biggest problems and the nationality law is only in Lebanon and in Jordan, we have this trouble. All the Arab, other Arab countries are okay. The mother who is married, for example, for a Mexican man, can pass her nationality to her children if she's divorced, if the, if the husband passes away. But up till now, we have this as clear discrimination against women. I would like also to say that the government of Jordan does not take the laws from international conventions. You know, uh, if there is an international convention for human rights, uh, for children or the child, for women, they take the, the laws and they put them in the national laws. But in Jordan, they don't do that. They sign uh, international conventions, but they put them in the drawer. Their the, the <laughs> job is finished. They don't put in the uh, jurisdiction or the judge who doesn't have them. And this is uh, one of the points that we are struggling against. Also- Ms. Leila, if you allow me. Yeah. If you allow me just to make things clear uh, about the um, our constitutional paragraph sex. Uh, uh, you just mentioned that it's, it should include the discrimination against women or like the word sex. Could you please no, explain no uh, to us more what does it include? Yeah other than sex? Uh, could you repeat the last thing? Yeah, I mean, the paragraph we have, just so that they can be clear about the issues, I don't know that we have a difference, I mean, we have a difference between the itself, what we're talking about, and we want to increase the sex. So what is actually included in it? It's the difference between the... It's the difference between the language, and the language, and the religion. Can you tell us about them in English? religion uh, yeah so it, the, the paragraph includes religion uh no according to religion according to uh race, race yeah and uh according to language not language but not sex. and they stop and they stop mm. the arab constitutions and the arab constitution every every constitution has uh, the word sex with religion, with language. And we brought, when we fight for it, we uh, show our uh, officials, look, all the Arab countries have it, all the Islamic countries have it, oh, but in Jordan, they, they don't have it in the constitution. Is this clear now? Yeah. And yeah. The, yeah. Uh, yeah. And I the was, other sorry. point is clear also about not signing or ratifying they say in english they ratify international conventions but they don't apply the law in uh, the uh, jordanian law i'm going to to talk about another uh, problem the problem uh, in um, sidao or sido because this is a convention for women this convention for women has two reservations. Jordan, once it ratified, it said, we don't like nationality law, the same story. Nationality, the mother cannot pass the nationality to her children. They, uh, they reserved on that, which is article number nine in CEDAW. 
also they speak about marriage and divorce. They say we don't accept uh, such numbers of uh, paragraphs from the law on marriage and on. We are telling uh, the officials that we should ratify all CEDAW and then solve the problems. Also, uh, I would like to mention something about the law related to child marriage. Maybe this is one of the problems that we fight for to stop child marriage. Uh, because in Jordan, we have the marriage age at 18 years, but there is in the law exception saying that you can marry at 15 if the sheikh or the person responsible from the ministry of religion, if he sees the interest of the child. So every sheikh sees it is in the religious uh, person, sees that it is better for, for uh, girls to marry at the age of 15, not 18. So this exception is there in the law. And we uh, raise and we fight and we raise petitions and we put it as one of our priorities to stop uh, this exception from the law of uh, marriage, uh, to make it only 18 for boys and for girls. The 15 is allowed for girls only. And this is, we don't like it at all. There are many, many discrimination laws in the labor law, but I'm going to speak about one. In the labor market, we have harassment. If this word is understood, harassment when a man uh, makes jokes with a mother, he touches, sometimes sexual uh, uh, assault, and sometimes it is uh, very bad in work. So uh, we don't have in Jordan a law against harassment in the work. The only Arab country that has this law is Egypt. It is new, but we have on our agenda as women's rights movement, we have to fight for uh, stopping sexual harassment or uh, assault. Sometimes it reaches assault uh, again against girls. We do have uh, now uh, like amendment in order to uh, let the owner of the institution uh, uh, to go to uh, uh, jail or to go to court if a girl uh, uh, asks for that, if she has a harassment in, in the workplace, but nobody takes the head of the institution, the head of the factory, the head, if another employee uh, uh, ha harass the girl. So it is not well uh, prepared, but it is an, on our agenda. This is very, very important to uh, abolish harassment or sexual uh, assault against workers in the same place. Uh, now, these Ms. are the- Ms. Laila, that, that, takes, that goes to the question of how women's organization uh, in Jordan, promote uh, women's rights. Like, what is the impact they have yeah. on the society in the yeah. society? Yeah, uh, we we raise uh, petitions. First of all, oh, we unite. This is uh, creates a movement in Jordan. Uh, there is in Jordan a commission for women, and it is called Jordanian National Commission for Women we put our hands together and through common work, through common agenda, we ask changes in, in the laws. How do we ask them? We go to parliament and we speak to parliamentarians, especially women parliamentarians, and we start uh, raising petitions, 
talking to officials, talking to legal people, uh, because it is always difficult to change. But if we keep on and on, I'll tell you that in some in some cases we got changes. For example, before uh, COVID nineteen in 2019 in April, there were uh, in the parliament uh, changes to labor law for women. So we had for the first time equal pay for equal work. Now we have it. This is after so many years of, of. Now what we do for, for labor law is to ask to apply the uh, article one, 190 in ILO. ILO is the international uh, ADA, and in it, they speak about harassment. So now what we do, we fight together, telling the people responsible for work that we should sign Article 190 because this is uh, an end to harassment in work. So this is the way we do it. We do it in common. We go to parliament and our role as uh, a uh, civil society, we go to uh, grassroots NGOs. We have so many, so many uh, civil society for women uh, organizations. And we, we unite. Our organization started uh, something called Musawa Network. Musawa in Arabic and in English means equality. Equality, yeah. Equality. So we say we are fighting together with the uh, people from the grassroots, from uh, rural areas, from villages. We go together, we form meetings together, and we jointly ask for changes into the law and the most important thing, and we find it that it is still in Jordan, women do not know about their rights. This is very important because uh, many of them are victims for the personal status law uh, in divorce and in marriage. They don't, they don't know their rights when divorce happens or uh, when they sign for marriage. They have so many privileges, but they don't know about them in order to put them in the contract. And uh, we try, this is the role of uh, our organization, to raise awareness of women to their rights, to understand what should they do in order to protect themselves. Also in Jordan, let me tell you uh, frankly, we have the violence and the violence against women is increasing after COVID-19. You know, uh, domestic uh, violence is... increased all mm -hmm. over the world and uh, they gave figures like 30%. In Jordan, we, uh, we don't have official statistics on the number of women who are uh, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, uh, Subject uh, to uh, violence. Victims, victims mm. of mm. violence. And that's why uh, we cannot give figures, but we think uh, in, from our uh, services that it is high. Now, what services uh, women give other than economic empowerment, political empowerment, they give uh, uh, awareness against violence against what is called gender-based violence, especially for young girls and for adolescent girls. Uh, we have in Jordan the refugees from Syria and they walk, uh, the young girls go to school and when they go to school, they are harassed and we should protect them. Uh, for protection, we do have uh, a national plan, national plan for uh, something called 1325. 1325 is a, a resolution by the Security Council. 
uh, the, this resolution speak that women should be protected and protection, not only uh, a protection to give them, uh, shall we say, houses to live in, but protection in the streets, protection when they go from the market to the house, no harassment. So this is what we try to do. And recently we did something called the pathway, safe pathway in many of uh, the hotspots for uh, harassment in the streets. But many women come to our centers. We have centers to serve survivors of violence. They come and they uh, need help. It's not medical. Uh, our job is only psychological. We give them psychological uh, support. If they need medical, we uh, transfer these women into medical centers. But when it, it is uh, uh, you know, about uh, psychological, we have staff. They have international standard uh, ways of uh, uh, protecting these women. Uh, their names even uh, are not given, and each woman is uh, seen by herself alone. And uh, we uh, protect her if she needs protection, but we raise her self-confidence. She should go and speak out. This is what we do for individual people. And then for groups also, we do it. So this is... Uh, uh, kind of work that women organizations do for what we call survivors or victims of, of violence. This is very common in uh, Jordan. Uh, let me talk about uh, also we deal with men and boys because we would like all citizens to, on, to raise the awareness about keeping the health of women, not to touch women, uh, no harassment, no uh, beating of, of women violence. So we try to talk to men and also to boys who go to sport uh, clubs. We make uh, awareness raising and sometimes they help us. We ask the, the husband to come if he is uh, very violent against it. And we talk and it's psychological help. Also, we try our best to analyze the policies and the practices. To elaborate on this, I would like to tell you that sometimes there is a good law, but in practice, it is not applied. The, the, we have a law against domestic uh, violence. And in the law, they say, if there is trouble in the home, the man goes out, the woman and the children stay in the house. This is in the law, but nobody applies it. I mean, the, the security when they come and they, and they see that the mother and the children are in the street, and the husband is in the house, they don't apply the, the law. In the law, it says that the husband should go out of the house and he should not be uh, like so many meters away from the house, not to come back. Uh, but the wife can and her children stay at home. But this is not applied. This is very bad and harmful. Also for accountability. Many uh, men who commit violence, they go, they say, no, I did not. They believe them. They, they believe their the husband, but they don't believe the survivor. Uh, in practice, it is because we live in uh, uh, patriarchal, if I understand the word, we live in a patriarchal society, uh, pat patriarchy, where all Wherever you go, it is men power, men uh, decision. Uh, if uh, uh, you go to a station, police station, 
to speak that my husband did so and uh, and they see that the eye is red and they see oh go back to your husband this is what they they tell their wife they don't help but they tell her go back to your husband and bear with him this is a trouble in our country but let me tell you that there is change and the change uh, goes in depth if women here are convinced that they have the right, that they uh, understand uh, uh, the situation, because women, most of, of the time, they don't report in Jordan, and they say in the Arab countries. Women, they don't report violence. Only 3%, women, only 3%, small portion of women, who are beaten every day, they complain. Only 3%. Women don't uh, like to go to police station. Women don't like to go to courts. And uh, women, uh, most of the time, uh, refer to their families. And it, it will be solved amongst families. They don't like to go to Department of Ministry of Interior, maybe, maybe, and this is what we all in the movement speak, that the men in the ministries, the men in the Department of what is called Family Protection, they are not the right persons to meet the survey. Now, for NGOs, for women's rights organization, we keep asking, please put police women in the police station, police women in the Department of Protection and Prevention for Women. If a woman is in a bad condition, she will speak to another woman in the police station. But to go to speak to a man, it is very difficult. And this is one of uh, the things that we are calling for. Uh, also, uh, maybe uh, uh, women find it difficult to go to court justice. Access to justice in Jordan is very low. Women don't like to go to court. Women don't like to go to the police to complain. And this is uh, very, very difficult. What we make sure of what we try to make to make sure of that the women should challenge the norm norms in the in the society if the family tell her uh, stay at home and she cannot stay she should by herself go to the police station and she should not listen to people who will say accept what your husband is doing to you and this is uh, what is uh, normal in our society. This is what is called stereotypes when uh, uh, it is the norms. Uh, traditionally, women, they don't speak. Women don't uh, complain. Uh, she has to leave the house. She has to take her children. Uh, if she is divorced, she has to accept it. Maybe uh, I will... Uh, yeah, and you shed light on the difference in divorce and marriage. In divorce, the man can divorce orally. He, he is not to go to the court to divorce. Uh, let's, let's suppose that he is playing cards and he's nervous and he will say, I will divorce my, my wife. It is, it is taken. And later on the court, but a woman, if she is going to apply for a divorce, she has to go to the court, she has to give uh, evidence, she has to speak to the judge, you know, the process is different. What we care for here in this area in particular, that uh, men should go to court to ask for divorce, not to do it orally. And this is uh, uh, something that we fight for.
also what is new in Jordan that the we have polygamy maybe this is not very much understood in Mexico the man can marry four wives and uh, sometimes uh, the wife doesn't know that he has another wife in, in such a case now there is a little bit of change that the man should tell the first wife that he married again but this is not applied not by all but this is now in the law a must that you cannot have a new marriage by signing the contract unless you tell the first wife um this is uh, you know i talked a lot should i stop now thank you so much um Gracias a todos. Uh, ahora te, estamos abiertos para preguntas. Tlayla, ¿es aquí Majal? Rajikun, ¿fi andhom as ile? Fahna rajinhawa el musulli kai el as ile, u ajan hadre tiket jau biha. Y señora Leila va a contestar a las preguntas. Ok. يعني المواضيع جدا شيقة ست ليلى نشكرك كثير يعني على مشاركتها معنا وأكيد هو بحر كبير من المعلومات اللي عندك ولكن خليك. يعني الله يسعدك هاي ليلى يا my name is Rocio Garcia I work at IPN and I just want to thank uh, for sharing with us the situation of women in Jordan. Uh, and I would like to know about the, uh, about the job, about the work. I mean, are mothers allowed to work there in Jordan? Ah, uh, you mean work opportunities? Yes, yes, I mean, yeah. If I am, yes, if I am a mother, uh, can I work there, for example? Yeah, uh, when, when we speak about women and work, it is a, a tragedy because in the statistics, the number of women who work is only 14%. I told you before that when they gra graduate from university, it is 52% of gradu graduates are women. Where do the women go? Only 14% work. This is because of difficulties. First of all, uh, now in Jordan, only private sector uh, has jobs. The, the government of Jordan very tiny little opportunities because of the new liberal process and uh, in our country no no work no no jobs and uh, the the private sector prefers uh, men to women and they do it bluntly because because they say women have to have the pregnancy, uh, maternity leave, and all these things. That's why, this is one reason. The other reason, women cannot, uh, 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 cannot go safe in public transportation. In public transportation, the harassment of women is very, very, very high. We talked a little bit earlier about harassment in the street, but the worst harassment for women is in public uh, transportation. Uh, the transportation, the general transportation in Jordan, now it is under revision. Uh, they, are, they are introducing uh, 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 the fast bus or something. They are trying their best to do it better. But up till now, no good general uh, transportation. If you don't have your car, you cannot go to work. This is very, very bad. And you know, uh, because in the capitalist countries, they, they need to sell cars, sell cars, sell cars. So if you come to visit Amman, <laughs> and people from Mexico, some of them live in Amman, they, they have to have their cars to go to work. 
but yeah. not all yeah. women can find yeah. uh, you know trans safe transportation to go to to work this is yeah uh, one of the reasons yeah miss Le miss Leila, i'm sorry i don't mean to interrupt uh, to interpret you but uh interrupt you but i mean uh, the session is this ending in five minutes and we have one more question about the situation yes. of women in uh, scientific research in jordan uh-huh uh what scientific where women are standing in this yeah yeah scientific research in jordan is weak to start with yeah it is it is in the uh, faculties uh, we have uh, several universities and uh, it is, uh, uh, shall we say, men control, because uh, we don't have uh, 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 no woman is a head of university. It is all men, and all the researchers uh, who are promoted. Have. We have few. We have few uh, 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 women uh, doing research, but I I would like to speak a good point that now in the universities, there are uh, centers especially for women studies. This is yeah. uh, because uh, we follow them. It's not scientific research as such, because women are very, very little number there, but there yeah. are women, there are women in the women's centers to promote research for women issues. We have uh, three main centers at Jordan University, Yarmouk University, and Al Hashmiya University. Three. Uh, these centers they uh, help girls to become researchers and to uh, devote uh, the work for women's issues. Ms. Leila, thank you so much, so much for your participation. It's never enough to discuss this topic and other topics with you. Alish, I'm, I'm you so, so glad because in Mexico, they don't uh, know much about Jordan. And we would like also in future to hear about Mexico and good luck for men and women in, in Mexico for uh, fighters of, for human rights and fighters of liberty. Okay. Thank so you, should thank we you so much. Bye? Should we say bye-bye for everybody? Any questions, and anyone? <laughs> Well, I don't know in uh, Spanish. Uh, how but they're is saying good presentation. Yeah. <laughs> bye bye. They say, they, okay. Mucho gusto, they say. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Habibi. Okay, thank you very much, everybody. Thank, thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah, bye-bye. Ciao.